I'm Matt Beardmore, and this is the Great British Chef's Signature Series. First started properly learning about Italian cuisine, probably in my last job where I worked at Trullo restaurant. But I've always had like a really keen interest in it. Um, always absolutely love pasta. I've been eating it since as long as I can remember. I think the thing that appeals to me most is the quality of the produce. And I love that it's, it's quite a sort of stripped back cooking. It's very rustic, it's very ingredients led. It's just uh, incredible. I'm Matt Beardmore. I'm the head chef at Ligare restaurant. Uh, today I'm going to be cooking orecchetti with uh, braised rabbit and Swiss chard. Okay, so we're going to start by making the uh, orecchetti dough. So we're going to start getting the water in there, in a the bowl. So into the water we're going to get the semolina and the flour. And then just got to give that a really good mix. Making pasta at home is uh, definitely something that anyone can do, especially um, a day like this because uh, it's all kind of rolled by hand. You don't need any uh, special equipment. You don't even need a uh, like a pasta roller. So it's super, super easy and it's good fun to do as well. So once that dough has come together, I'm just going to give it a really good knead on the surface. I'm going to need to do this for a good five minutes until it's really nice and smooth. Once you've kneaded the dough, got it all nice and smooth, I want to wrap it up in cling film nice and tight and then chuck it in the fridge for about an hour. So this is our dough that's been resting in the fridge for about an hour. You want to take it out maybe 10 minutes before you use it just to, just to soften it up and it's a bit easier to work with. We're making orecchetti, uh, which means little ears in Italian. A lot of Italian dishes are kind of traditionally served with a certain type of pasta. But I find it's a lot of trial and error, so I'll, you know, I'll come up with a dish and try it with a few different shapes. And then, you know, as a team, we'll kind of try it all and decide which one works best. So we're just going to roll it out a little bit. And we just want to kind of cut it into one centimetre cubes. Doesn't matter if they're a bit uneven, rustic's good. Okay, so what we're going to do is just dust the tray with a bit of semolina. So what you do is take one of your little cubes and just push with your thumb away from yourself like that. And then basically you just turn it inside out over your finger. And pop them on the tray. And now we've got to just repeat that about a hundred times. It's basically about getting the, the dough to the right consistency. If it's too dry or it's too wet, it's going to be a nightmare to work with. So, you know, find a, find a good recipe and stick to it. You can make these uh, in, a, in a pasta extruder, but I think they just kind of lose part of their charm in a way. You can really tell when they've been made by hand. Once they're done, um, all you need to do is just leave them out to dry uh, for half an hour to an hour, uh, just so they hold their shape when you cook them in the water. Okay, so next step is to get the rabbit cooked. So I've got rabbit legs and rabbit shoulders. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna start by just gently searing these off in a pan. So we'll season them up with a good little bit of salt. So I kind of wanted to do a bit of a uh, twist on your classic ragu. I think rabbit's like a really nice, interesting flavour. It's a bit lighter and a bit more sort of elegant than, uh, you know, like a big fatty like pork ragu or a beef ragu. So once the rabbit's seasoned up, I'm just going to get a bit of oil in the pan and then just gently start searing that off. So we get our rabbits from uh, butchers in uh, wet, based in West London called HG Water. Um, we're using farmed rabbits today. I'm just going to give this like two or three minutes on each side and just till it's nice, nice and even all over. What we're doing is just kind of sealing in all of the moisture and all the flavour into the rabbit. Um, so when we go on to braise it, um, it'll keep it really, really nice and moist. And it's just a nice gentle sear there. I don't want to take it too far. So while that rabbit's searing off, uh, I'm just going to uh, cut up a bit of veg. So all we're going to do is just roughly chop this up. Just nice chunky pieces like that. Okay, so now that rabbit's nicely seared off, I'm just going to pop that into a tray. And into the same pan, I'm going to just chuck all this veg. Get a little touch more oil in there. The rabbit's quite a lean meat, so there's not a lot of fat coming out of it. And again, we just want to gently cook this for about four or five minutes just to take off that, uh, that rawness. So once we've got the veg this stage, just started to take on a little bit of colour. We're just going to bang in a little bit of white wine. I just want to cook off the booze for a couple of minutes, um, else it will just have a bit of a winey taste and that won't really cook away in the oven. So 
Just let that boil down for a minute or so. Okay, so once we cook the wine off a little bit, I'm just gonna chuck in some chicken stock. And then we're just gonna bring that up to the boil. Okay, so now it's come up to the boil. I'm just gonna pour all of that over our rabbit there. And now I'm just gonna get a piece of parchment paper over the top and then wrap it really tightly in foil. You wanna make sure you're locking all of that flavor and moisture in. Let me chuck that in the oven uh, for about an hour at 170. Okay, so now the rabbit's had um, about an hour in the oven. We're now gonna take the meat off the bones very carefully because it's gonna kick out a load of steam. And what we're looking for is just the meat nicely just coming away from the bones there. So that's perfect. So we'll just take the rabbit out of there, pop it onto a plate. We'll just leave that to cool down for a few minutes. And then what we need to do is just uh, strain off all that stock into a pan. So the stock um, forms like the base of the sauce. Rather than sort of combining it all together now and making like a ragu, we're gonna assemble it as we kind of make the dish. Okay, uh, so once the rabbit's cooked and cooled down enough to handle, we just wanna shred all the meat off the bones. So simply just pull it away like that. We wanna keep it a little bit chunky, not completely shredded. Yeah, there's a big difference between uh, farmed and wild rabbits. Uh, wild rabbits are a lot leaner and they have a really, really strong gamey flavor. Whereas farmed rabbits, um, a, lot, a lot milder flavor. Still got that slight little gaminess to them, but uh, nowhere near. So we've got some Swiss chard here. Uh, all we want to do is just strip the leaves from the stalks there. It's got a really nice kind of um, minerally earthy flavour, which I think works really well with the, with the rabbit. Now, we're just going to use the, uh, the leaves in the dish, uh, but what you can do is uh, just chop up the stalks and chuck them in with the veg when you're braising the rabbit. Okay, now all we want to do is just blanch the charred leaves uh, for about a minute. I'm going to chuck them in there. Okay, so once those leaves are nice and wilted, I'm just going to take them out of the water and chuck them into some ice water just to stop the cooking straight away. And then with the charred leaves, we just want to give them a little squeeze to get rid of all the excess water. And then we're just going to roughly chop through it. Okay, so now we've got everything ready for the rabbit. We're going to drop the pasta. I'm going to boil that for about three to five minutes. In the meantime, we're gonna get a nice ladle full of the rabbit stock, a couple of knobs of butter, and some of that shredded rabbit. And we're just gonna gently warm that back through. We wanna keep it moving so the butter emulsifies with the sauce. We also wanna get a good whack of black pepper in there and a little bit of lemon zest. So when you're boiling pasta, you want the you want the water pretty heavily salted, almost like seawater, not quite. And that's kind of where most of the seasoning for the dish comes from. I'm not going to add any extra salt to it. All that's going to come from from the pasta pasta water. So now the pasta's cooked. I'm going to shake off the excess water and dump it straight into the rabbit. And now what I want to do is just give it a really good toss in the pan. And what this is doing is it's bringing all the sauce together, um, all the starch. Uh, is coming out of the pasta. I'm just going to thicken up the sauce. I'm now going to chuck in some of those charred leaves and just keep working it like that. It starts looking a little thick. We can just add a little splash more of that stock in there. It's going to be quite vigorous with when you're doing this because you really want to kind of encourage that starch out of the pasta into the sauce. So the reason I love this shape and that I think it works so well with this dish, not only does it have a really nice kind of chewy, bouncy texture, when you toss it with the sauce, you end up with these beautiful little like cups of sauce that just fill the pasta and it's really, really beautiful. And we'll finish with a nice dusting of Parmesan. This is my orecchietti with braised rabbit and Swiss chard.